All right, we'll now call the council meeting for April 26th to order, 6 p.m. Please rise to the invocation and pledge allegiance. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. We just ask that your will be done tonight, Lord. We ask that you would speak to each and every one of us, Father. Help us make good decisions, Lord, for the future of the city, Father. Help us to bless this community, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. We can get a roll call, please. Councilmember Grice. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Sutherland. Here. Mayor Bernard. Here. Here. First up, we have a discussion about the Mall Festival. It's calling for uh, Shane Eason. I don't see him out there. Is he probably still on the way? Yes. All right, we'll go ahead to the uh, consent agenda first and we'll come back to that. We have the resolution 2020-01, renewing the state of emergency. No action is needed there. We have the minutes from April 12th, 2021, council regular meeting. Is there a motion? I make a motion. I'm also approved by the minutes of April 12th, 2021, agenda 5 and C6, council members regular meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any changes or questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Sutherland, oh, sorry, Johnson? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Jackie Member Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. If someone who knows uh, the Easons, whenever you see them arrive, uh, if you can just signal the board and we'll come back to that. Item number seven, we have the Advertisement and proceed of unsolicited proposal, City of Avon Park Executive Airport. We have uh, Mr. Clary with us tonight. I assume he'll be doing most of the explaining. He will. <laughs> Mr. Clary, would you like to uh, begin? Uh, yes, sir. Um, we have reviewed the revised no, she was looking for the point. So where are you? Where are you? Here. He, he wanted you to see him at first. <laughs> Sorry. We appreciate you being here, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Absolutely. We have reviewed. Uh, there was an updated, unsolicited proposal provided by the uh, the team. We reviewed that and determined that uh, that does meet the requirements of our statutes uh, for an unsolicited proposal submitted to the city. Um, we've also reached out to the Federal Aviation Administration and also for the DOT to determine because they provided grant funds to the city for the airport, what the any requirements they would have associated with the process. Uh, they both have indicated they would like to review the lease um, and also approve that prior to approval by the city. So with that process, and they'll also be, I'm sure, looking at some of the other supporting materials. So that will be part of the process. Um, and would anticipate doing that should the city decide after advertisement uh, to proceed. So Mr. Clary, just to be clear, is that something that they would begin after the city, after the, the uh, advertisement process or during? Uh, it really depends on the city and your direction. Um, if you want to go ahead and start working on a lease document, they would probably be willing to go ahead and look at that uh, as soon as you felt uh, ready to present it to them for review. Uh, so you could go ahead and start on that now, or you could wait until after the end of the advertisement period. That's really up to the city. Yeah, it, it would seem from the previous meetings that you were, you know, interested in proceeding forward at least with this group so uh it's my recommendation to go ahead and get started on it and that we do it um through um lowell and uh, uh david at the firm and get that started so that we don't have any more you know delay in time because uh, i know that time's a critical issue for them um and um i, I think we need to 
take the first cut at this so that we get it to where we believe it's someplace something that the FAA and the DOT can approve. So I, I would ask to approve that they do that work. Okay. Has Does anyone? They, I'm sorry. Go I was just going to ask if anyone on the board is, is uh, opposed to that action. I'm not. I just have a question in regards to what's been provided to us thus far. Has anyone reviewed that information? The original lease language that was provided to us had the attorneys or anyone looked at that? Are you talking about and, and, and singled out no go sections or good sections and stuff? No. no it, um, We've gotten the revised information that's okay. you know sufficient to get us to the point where we can advertise, and um, we haven't looked at the. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever been provided the previous lease, but I'm not sure it would be helpful. Um, so um, at this point, you know, they'll take what has been proposed and, and start on that basis, you know, with whatever we can do, and, and then uh, see what happens at that point. At least we'll have a framework of a lease. Get you know, an entry selection, so obviously. We're leaving it open without selecting somebody, but you know, we can start at least at least to, that, that uh, uh, we think can be something you would accept and something that the FAA and DOT would accept. And can I add one thing to that? Go ahead. In, in reference to the amended proposal, which the attorney and law have just um, opined that it, it meets the floor statute, I've made each copy here. Obviously, it's confidential when the meeting's over. I'll hand it to you so you can see it. Okay. Mr. Cleary, uh, do you have your direction? Uh, I feel the council yes, wants sir. to move forward having the FAA and DOT look at that lease proposal. Uh, yes, sir. And the other item we had was the advertisement draft, mm -hmm. and we were interested if you had any comments or questions associated with that. Okay. Does the council have any comments or questions? I don't. No, but I just say let's start the 21 day period as soon as possible. Yep. Yeah. There you have it. The, the only thing I have, Lowell, I, I spoke to, in a meeting earlier with Lowell. I spoke to the paper afterwards. As soon as they can run it is Friday the 30th. We have to get it into another uh, state magazine as well. Um, or administrative. Or administrative term. So, um, you need a motion? Yes, it would if you just cover it. Cover both those things with the motion, start the lease, and get yeah. start the advertisement. Do we have a motion to that effect? I right, so move. Sorry, second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any further questions? Anyone in the audience on video? Seeing none, we'll call a roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Deputy, Deputy Mayor Kennard? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Anderson? Yes. I, I just have one uh, observation as well afterwards. I, I think you know when they're, they're all they're going to have to go by is the, this point. You know, looking at what's being proposed, been proposed, and um, um, so I mean, I, I think you talked before about sending this information or sending that maybe we can correspond directly with Lowell. Is that all right? I mean, with regard to some of those things that um, might be like total no, total no goes or or what. You think it's premature? Just go ahead and do a draft and, and work on it. Then, with uh, I'm referring to like terms. Um, there was a draft term sheet provided. Uh, we got an updated version uh, in this uh, amended amount. We'll obviously look at those as part of that and provide that in the draft. Uh, but you know, there will be policy items that will need to come back to the council, obviously, for your consideration uh, as part of that. So there are items in there that uh, obviously DOT and FAA are also going to look at. So we can get those started. All right, thanks. Very good. Thank you, David. Okay, we see that we have the Easons with us, I'm told. So the uh, discussion is for the mall festival. Uh, I believe there was more than just the mall festival. Um, but if you guys will kindly come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record and we'll get started. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is Shane Easton. And uh, my name is Shane Easton. This is my wife, Sherry. Uh, we currently live at uh, 7003 Seaport Avenue 
and Temple Terrace, Florida. Okay. Um, just a quick question before we get started. How many people here uh, grew up in Avon Park, born and raised? Okay, so there's quite a few. Sherry and I both grew up in Avon Park, and one of our favorite memories of growing up here was the Mall Festival and the sense of community that it brought. Mm -hmm. For two days in the early summer, thousands of people came to our small town to enjoy the food, crafts, vendors, and entertainment. Over the years, the types of arts and craft was changed, and a lot of craftsmen and vendors were felt left, felt left out. It became smaller and smaller, eventually going away. Um, our children and grandchildren don't have the opportunity to have the same memories that we have growing up in Avon Park, you know, saving your allowance for the Mall Festival. Um, there's an event, I don't know if many of you know about it, there is an event that happens twice a year in Fort Bead in a pasture in the middle of nowhere. It's called the Flywheelers. Yep. Over a four day weekend, they have 20 to 30,000 people show up. I don't know what the purpose of the Flywheelers is, other uh, what it benefits other than the Flywheelers themselves, but I find it hard to believe that if they can get 20 to 30,000 people to show up in a pasture in the middle of nowhere, that we can't have a piece of that in our town as well. Um, we feel that if it, well, the Mall Festival was brought back, we could bring that sense of community back to back to our town because over the years there has been a divide in our town um, along cultural lines, racial lines. There, there's a divide. I see it. Everyone sees it, especially with everything that's been going on in the mainstream media lately. We want to bring our community back together as one. The community I grew up in was not like this. We have, or we would be partnering um, with Galen Thomas and the uh, Heartland Cultural Alliance, um, along with other uh, along with other sponsors to put this on. We're looking at having it uh, the first week of April uh, of 2022. It's a little late to start trying to plan anything right. now because it takes quite some time to get everything in line. Mm -hmm. um, what we're basically looking to do is, we're like it was before, we're looking to shut down the two inside lanes of Main Street from Donaldson Park to Museum Avenue. Um, we're not going to push it past the train tracks because right. that gets that gets uh, the railroad companies involved and it's just it's too much liability right. to deal with the railroad tracks. Um, we understand that it's a large undertaking. It really is, and we're willing to put in the legwork for that undertaking. We've already been in contact with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and they think it's an amazing idea. Um, the feedback that we've gotten, you, know, you see in the, the flyers that we handed out, the feedback through social media and, and through our uh, petition is just amazing. I mean, people are wanting this and what we're asking for is just the support of the city to put this on. We need the permission, the blessing of the city. We're prepared. Not only do we have to organize this event, and it's going to take a lot of hands and minds to do it, we're prepared for the organization of various fundraisers to raise funds for this. Um, with the help of the Heartland Cultural Alliance, um, we're going to be submitting for grants, if allowed. And also, um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from people that work in the county and the city that have said, if I could help pull this off, let me know. I love working, you know, around town and doing things to help. Yeah. So people are, are eager to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And now is as good a time as any, it, it, it's the best time because everybody's been cooped up so long and there's been so much emotion and loss and grief that everybody is in their feels. And now is a time that everybody's going to be more receptive to coming together. I would like to learn more about, you know, the Mexican community. I would like to learn more about their style of dancing and their music and their foods. And I mean, we've got all kinds of demographics around here. Yep. And they need to feel that 
they're they're new to this town just because they didn't grow up here that you know they're a part of it we need new traditions so i don't think anybody's going to fight you mm -hmm. to have the event so, i mean everybody everybody for several years that i've seen uh, on this council has been very much for events it's just a matter of getting a group of people that wants the the undertaking of putting it on putting it on obviously with main street um you know you will be closing down lanes so there's a process for that um, there is an event application that process that you go through it's pretty simple um, it does end up getting approved by the council um, but if you're willing to fill out the paperwork and you're willing to provide the insurance and the associated fees with it you're not going to have any problem so you're, you're doing a great thing by trying to get it next year and starting it now right. um, by all means because even if you guys get all the paperwork done you, you got to get vendors there you got to get you know right and most vendors are scheduled a year out exactly this. Yeah, we got to get everybody excited online and et cetera, et cetera. So. We are actually moving that to Avon Park, which we didn't want to leave in the first place. Well, I was going to take care of my elderly mother, but we're coming. We've been gone for about a year and we're coming back. Right. We were Happy kind of waiting back. for rentals to become available. Anyway, so we trying to do that and this at the same time, we want to make sure that there's there's going to be a lot of headaches. There's going to be days that we want to throw our hands up. Sure. We're going to follow this through. We're going to meet our deadlines. We're going to do everything it takes. We will jump through every hoop. And if we can't do it ourselves, then we will find the people that can. Awesome. Well, let me just simply say that um, uh, the festival is this size, going to need a comprehensive agreement. That's what we've done in the past for the watch festivals. And so make sure you leave plenty of time to get that done. Okay. Yes. Yep. I have a question. Are you working on uh, an organization or are you going to be under the Heartland Coalition? The Heartland um, Coalition. Okay. Okay. Talk to Alliance. We're we're working on an organization, but we're right, as a, as it stands right now, we're going to okay. be partnering with the Heartland Cultural Alliance. We didn't want to call it the quote unquote mall festival because we don't want anyone from any you know race, religion, creed, culture to feel left out. Gotcha. This is this is not about you know people coming down and setting up on Main okay. Street. This is about a community that's culturally mixed across the board, coming together as one community. Gotcha. As okay. the proud mother of the fastest crawling baby in 1999, <laughs> I love <like> this <laughs> event because that was the uh, his his first um, athletic event of his life. <laughs> and he won it during the springtime on the mall event. So I would like to have, see that one come back. Well, I do have, I don't know if you'll have a way to put this in, but I do have a PowerPoint that has a lot of what's in front of you but also uh, kind of a better picture. It's short, sweet, to the point. I didn't know if you wanted to put this in or not. Um, but one of the things that I did want to mention, we don't want to overwhelm, yeah. is um, just the fact that there is going to be future events. People are asking for the Halloween carnivals, the parades. So, I mean, for the record, uh, the council is in support of all events. The only pushback, personally, I've ever heard was whenever Main Street's closed down, absolutely during the weekdays it's a bit of a problem for some of the businesses but like you're doing with the inside lane the outside lanes open everybody can still get their deliveries like they need to so i don't see any problems with it and that's the way and that's the way it used to be is they, they close the inside lane right and when i when i first started going to the mall festival honestly it started here in front of the in front of city hall yeah and it went all the way up past Morton realty yeah I mean, train tracks and everything was included, and it would take you two days to see the whole thing. Right. And over the years, I mean, people like yourself come forward, and, and they're gung-ho about it, and they have it for X amount of years, and then those people get tired of doing it or move on to different places. And unless new people come along to take it up and start doing it again, it, it goes away. You know, so this, the, the city themselves, we, we don't actually do events. You know, it, it's a private organization that do events. You know, we just go down the roads for you and things like that. So. Right. You know, but by all means, um, we're happy to facilitate it. You'll just want to go ahead and get uh, whichever organization you're going to use uh, to go ahead and fill out the paperwork uh, that can be found at City Hall. I'm sure, Mark Schrader there, the city manager, and uh, Danielle Phillips can get you sorted out on all your paperwork and everything, get you started. And uh, there will be an agreement, as the uh, city attorney had stated, uh, but they'll be able to fill you in on all those details and get it going. And then your PowerPoint that you have, whenever it actually comes back to the board for approval, um, that'd be the perfect time to show exactly what you're going to do and all that kind of good stuff. And by that time, you'll probably have a lot more support with you and, you know, it'd be an even better showing so everybody will be excited about it. So by all means, we thank you for doing it and uh, hope to see you soon.
Thank you. Thank you very much. One quick thing, uh, you guys are aware of the Turret Development Commission, TDC. Maria, I think Maria can help you with that because they there's an application with that as well. Okay. And I would encourage you to get one of the applications and fill it out. That will count the heads and beds. Okay. So if you can designate, for example, just a quick run through, if you know so many vendors are coming and they're going to spend the night, then you coordinate with the hotels. And then what they do is they count those heads and then you get funding based on that. And the dollars can only be used outside of the county for advertising. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So I will text you the phone number to call and um, Casey Wall is the uh, lead person for that for the county. Okay. She does and she helps with marketing with it and everything and we haven't had an event inside the city of Avon Park through the TDC so I think this would be a good start. Amen. Wonderful. Thank oh, you. Amazing. Thank you for the information. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Kelvin, appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Coming back, too. Can I have a copy from the record? I can also email this uh, presentation so that you guys can, because it's I printed everything except for pictures. Okay. So, okay. Thank, thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right. Item number eight. We have a request for a construction of dock. I see CFRPC is here to represent. Good evening, Dana Rebell, Senior Planner with Central Florida Regional Planning Council, for the record. Yes, ma'am. So as you're aware, item eight is the request for the construction of a dock, and that is as a result of section 2.05.02 of the City of Avon Park Land Development Regulations, which as we were reviewing this dock permit, we discovered an and it specifically says no permit shall be issued for a boat slip and or ramp dock or boathouse except by the city council. The proposed site plan is included in your packets and it illustrates the layout of the proposed dock. It has been reviewed by planning staff for compliance. And tonight we're just here for the approval. Okay. I certainly don't have any issues with it. Is there anyone has any questions? I don't, I only have a question for the city attorney. How old is this section and is it normal for a council to have to approve these? Shouldn't okay. it just go through planning and zoning? And I was going least? there after. Sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> was this like an old insert uh, in the LDR? I, I have never heard of the council actually approving docs. I mean, they come very rarely, but can that be something that can just be done away with and just let city management handle it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely not. I mean, you establish the standards that you wish and, um, you know, the footage and so on has to be uh, has to be under a certain size anyway. Otherwise, they have to get approval from the uh, uh, Army Corps of Engineers as well. A thousand square feet. Yep, a thousand square feet, right? And so um, there's other regulations I think we should probably care about what it looks like and what, how it's maintained, things like that. And I'm sure that such reporter can give you some suggestions on how to get that out of your hands. There's already some pretty robust building codes when it comes to docks anyway, um, that everyone in the county already has to adhere to. So I don't see an issue with the, the current existing county rules. So direction from council would be to bring forward a text amendment that would include the, count, the same rules and regulations that the county currently has and replace the regulations in the Avon Park and Development Regulations. Yes. And, it, and not have the city council do it. Yes, right. Okay. Gotcha. No problem. They could build a mansion, but they still have to come to council for a dock. It doesn't seem like it <laughs> <laughs> makes a whole lot of sense. But anyway, you have your direction there. Uh, any further questions on the actual application? No, if, uh, I just need a motion if we would please. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. Was it Ms. Gray that second? Yeah. Okay. I have one question. Go ahead. I see you are. On the diagram that shows it uh, 50 feet in length. Is mm -hmm. that safe and standard for that lake? For the lake itself, I'm not entirely sure. They do have a self certification permit from Department of Environmental Protection. DEP allows them to extend out to 200 feet, or I believe they also have a 30% limit depending on the size of the lake. So during the time of permitting with DEP, if that were to be an issue, they would come and, okay. and address that. One of the other requirements is that it doesn't impede uh, boating traffic. Right. Exactly. So if it was in, you know, canal, let's say, you wouldn't be able to block that. But 
mean, in my opinion, 50 feet is not gonna, your, your, your grass line probably sticks out more than 50 feet in some places. So. Really? Yeah. I wonder it cost me so much to water. Yeah. <laughs> Torpedo grass, non-native. That's, I was have there, a lot of that. Was there an application fee for this? No. No. Yes. Oh. $22. Okay. Okay. Is there, we already have a motion and a second? Yes. So if there's no further questions, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank Next you. up, we have number nine, public hearing to be second reading for ordinance 07-2021. We'll now read that for the record. The ordinance amending the official zoning map of the city of Avon Park Board amending one parcel of land, parcel number A-22-33-28-010-0420 and 0040, totaling 0.90 acres located at 2 East Main Street from the city zoning of C4 mixed use commercial district to city PUD plan unit development, uh, providing for severability and providing for effective date. Thank you. And we're pulling up the PowerPoint now. I think it'll be the other PowerPoint, maybe. Um, but I can go ahead and get started. So this is the second reading. This has come before the city council before, and this was as a result of a city initiated request to rezone the Brickell building. I think there's an issue with my PowerPoint. It's okay, we can go on without it. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I think it's my fault. Um, but yeah, so I was going to share the same information that we all heard during the first reading, which is the parcel is currently zoned C4 mixed use commercial and the request is for a rezone to plan unit development. The plan unit development is to allow a maximum of 10 dwelling units on the parcel. And um, there were a couple of amendments to the proposed conditions at the most recent planning and zoning meeting. And we also added a couple of conditions based on our first here, our, yeah, I'm sorry, our first reading with city council. So I wanted to point out condition number two under exhibit B in the ordinance. It says, in the event any portion of the subject property is divided, a minimum of 0 0.62 acres must be retained on the portion of property occupied by the existing building structure in order to permit a maximum density of 10 dwelling units. The requirement is consistent with the downtown commercial future land use, which permits up to 16 dwelling units per acre. So that was a clarification from planning staff that if we still have to comply with the future land use, which is 16 dwelling units per acre. So if they do develop at a maximum of 10 dwelling units in the Brickell building, then 0 0.62 acres must be set aside. And I specifically wanted to point that out because the parking lot is approximately 20,000 square feet, which is almost half an acre. So if they do develop to a maximum density of 10 dwelling units, then a portion of the parking lot might have to be sold off with the, Br the Brickell building. As we discussed, there's the potential for selling off a portion of the parking lot or the whole parking lot. Mm -hmm. But if we do 10 dwelling units, a portion of the parking lot will need to be included with the Brickell building. Does that make sense? Is that like half of the parking? So Probably would, about a quarter. It would be 27,000 total square feet. So that building itself is how many square feet? Uh, approximately 14,000 square feet. Minus 14. You're looking at 13,000 square foot of the parking lot. We have to go with it. That's if they develop that all the units, right? Right. Okay. And if they developed nine units, then they wouldn't have to retain as much land they might be able to get away without taking a portion of the parking lot. 
if they only do nine units. Exactly. Why would it have to be sold though? I mean, are you saying it's a possibility that it would have to, or that it absolutely has to? So if you all choose to subdivide the parcel, then you need to make sure that there's enough land with the brickle building to meet retensity. Oh, I'm sorry, density. So in order to meet 10 dwelling units, we need to keep 0 0.62 acres with the brickle building. In order to do that, it would encroach on the parking. We aren't necessarily saying that you would have to sell a portion of the parking that's up to council. But if you do, then the ramification of that might be that a portion of the parking lot will be retained with the Brickle building. Only if we subdivide. Correct. So we don't intend to subdivide. No, and I, I was thinking, you know, let's just say someone goes in there with 10 dwelling units and then two years from now they want to combine three of those into one big one, then they're going to have excess parking space. And that takes away from our goal of having more for the businesses. So to me, I like you say, keep it separate. The parking goes with whatever contract we have with whomever gets the building and that all of it stays with us. Right? And to be clear, by subdividing, I mean selling off a portion of the land. So you're just talking about potentially leasing the parking lot or something of that nature, right? Okay. Right. Okay. And so I'm sorry, moving on to the next change on number three. It says any interior improvements made to support residential or non-residential uses shall be required to meet all occupancy and building code requirements, that standard. But then on number four, the planning and zoning board recommended that any future development shall allow for retail commercial uses on the first floor and multifamily residential on the second floor only. The only change here is that they specifically wanted commercial downstairs and residential upstairs. So we had, we did say that commercial would be allowed downstairs. We just didn't specifically say that they would be limited one upstairs and one downstairs. So are we saying that they have to have residential upstairs? If they develop upstairs, it can only be residential. Preferably. Well, that's not something that we would want to put in there. We, no, would, I mean, we would want them to be able to, right. Offices, now, whatever. If, if you're a home-based business, I mean, you'd have to have an occupational license if you're having people coming, coming and going. I've seen buildings in downtown Lake Wales where half of it is residential and the other half is, is uh, commercial. Yeah, so I don't think we want to limit it to only residential. It's just that they would only be able to have residential upstairs. So they could not have residential downstairs, but they could upstairs as yeah. well as business. And then also the term uh, retail commercial uses. Retail to me would imply that you have customers that come visit you. What do we care if it's an internet only business that has no customers that come see them or an office complex or a call center or whatever. I don't think we want to limit it to only retail, just commercial. I agree. And it could be a combination of both upstairs and downstairs for- Sure, it's just that if they're gonna have residential, the residential could only be upstairs. upstairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that agreeable? Yep. That's fine. Right. And the last change that uh, planning staff added would be number five, in accordance with parking requirements of section 3.03.02, table 3.5 of the city's land development code, parking spaces for residential units shall be provided within the on-site parking area of the approved PUD at a ratio of 1.7 spaces per each residential unit established. So that's just to say because in previous meetings, we had discussed potentially subdividing or selling off, or we believe that we might be going that direction. So we just wanted to add an additional condition that parking would be provided for the residential units on the second floor. I got a question. Yes. Just say, for instance, if a company wanted to have a uh, business in their home upstairs, they would not be allowed additional parking for their business. Is that correct? I mean, they could work out a private transaction between the city or whoever owns the parking, but we aren't going to require that as a result of their home occupation. Right. And the remainder of that parking lot is public anyway, oh, okay. so they can use that. Correct. 
So it looks like the two changes that I have are that on number four, strike out retail to allow all commercial uses and to allow commercial uses on the first and second floor and multifamily residential on the second floor only. Yes. Any other changes? That's okay. what I have. All right, we'll go ahead and get a motion and then we'll have a public hearing. I'll make a motion we go ahead and approve uh, Number D9, ordinance 07-2021. So second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. This will now be a public hearing. Public hearing for ordinance number 07-2021 is now open. Anyone of the public wishing to speak on this can do so. Mr. Karras, you to come up to the podium and give your name and address, please. This is just a uh, question inquiry with respect to the parking. And this is George Karras. George Karras, 28 East Main Street, Sir. Um, Chamber of Commerce. About two years ago, um, Mr. Brokaw uh, donated the land directly in front of the brick hole next adjacent to the post office. Mm -hmm. You guys leveled that property. Um, it's not on the direct premises of Brickle, but that too could be considered partitioned off for, to, to meet the parking requirements. Is yes. that a possibility? Yes. Okay. Great. Just want to bring that up. It's just currently not built out as a parking lot. So whether the sure. city does or whether the new landowner does. Okay. Somebody it's a has it. It's city property though, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other person from the public wishing to speak or ask any questions? Seeing none, we will call a roll. Council member Gray? Yes. Council member Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor? Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So does this mean we can go ahead and start advertising this now that we have the specifics or do we, you know, so? Jerry? I don't see why not. She has specifics. We have it, uh, boy, this microphone. Yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yes. Okay. So I have one other thing. So let's just say you put it the advertising and you put these specifications in there that you get 1.7 parking spots, you get commercial use upstairs. Um, could there be a line on there that says other items are negotiable? Because someone might want to come in and say, I need two parking spots to sell my high end apartment, luxury apartments. Uh, um, you know, then we can come back and, and redo the parking if need be with an agreement with the city and not stick to the 1.7. I would absolutely say that simply because there may be something we haven't thought about that even requires a zoning change. And, you know, that yeah. you say, wow, that, that's a good idea. So, yeah. And then the other thing is we've never really fixed on a price. We've never decided that. I know that we have spoken about this on several occasions, but never really narrowed it down to go there. What we had discussed before was just leaving it open. And rejecting all offers if you want. As like. is. Right. As is coming. Okay. So in regards to um, impact fees and stuff, I mean we had discussed way back when that you know if you have a building and it gets torn down, that whoever comes in gets to take advantage of the fact that someone else already paid that. So do we have to have that in the RFP or RFQ, whatever way we go about this or to let them know what's available, that way they're not bombarding city staff with endless, you know, questions. And... I would simply just say that some impact fee credits available. Okay. Well, then you're going to draft that, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> right? okay. Yeah. okay. We should be able to know somewhat what was there before because of the size of the meter. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I do on a weekly basis get inquiries about this building and they're just waiting for this to go through and so that you right. know when this gets done so we can look at it and it gets advertised for 30 days right or 21 days mm -hmm. what is it 30 30. 30. Yep. so okay and if we don't get any good offers within 30 days then we'll be looking for new options right okay do we have a, a taxable value for that The, uh, the property appraiser should have a yeah. you know, quote unquote taxable value. And then there's, I believe there was also a, uh, a chat. Uh, yes. You can get an appraisal done. Um, you can, and there's two possibilities. You can get a commercial appraisal 
um, which would just basically tell you what it's worth about the stand, and you, or you get an uh, MAI appraisal, which would be able to appraise the value of the businesses and things like that going into it. Um, either way, you can keep the appraisal uh, from the public record so that somebody can't get them. But we got record. one yeah. a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it was already exposed. Okay. That was a standard real, real estate appraisal? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a commercial appraisal, was it not? Yeah. I, I think so. Drink Richard. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so who's going to draft the publication? Is this going to be a staff member? Are we all going to scribble on napkins and put it together? What are we going to do? We can. Okay. Yeah, we can just look at it. Yeah, yeah Seabrook just put one out and they just reviewed one. They have a couple of templates, I'm sure, that they can be. The staff will put one together, Jerry will bless it, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Very good. Moving on to item number 10. This will be the first reading for Ordinance 02 2021. Ordinance of the City Council of Avon Park, Florida, providing for regulation of mobile. Mobile. Mobile food dispensing vehicles, lunch trucks, and other outside building sales of food and beverages added in Article 4 to Chapter 26 of the Code of Ordinances titled Food Trucks, provide for amending Section 2.03.00 General Regulations for Commercial slash Industrial Zoning Districts of the Unified Plan Development Code by adding Section 2.03.04 Mobile Food Dispensing Vehicles and Lunch Trucks. Provide for amendment of section 2.04.01 zoning district summary tables. Provide for amendment of section 2.04.02 establishment of zoning districts of the Unified Land Development Code, section 2.04.02.07. C2 general commercial. Provide for de definitions and clarification for a violation for clarifications. Uh, provide for uh, conflicts. Provide for severability of provisions. Provide for scrivener's errors. Provide for Inclusion in the code, provide for levels construction and provide an effective date. Thank you, Jerry. Once again, Central Florida Regional Planning, you are up. Good evening, Dana Riddell, still with you for the record, Senior Planner with Central Florida Regional Planning Council. So before us tonight, we have Ordinance 02-21, which our city initiated text amendments regarding food trucks and lunch trucks, no longer regarding transient merchants pursuant to our last meeting. So on March 9th, 2021, the Planning and Zoning Board uh, recommended approval with a significant number of changes. And at the following meeting, uh, City Council reviewed planning and zoning's recommendations, and we made the significant, um, I'm sorry, we made the following notable changes. So transient merchants shall not be included in the ordinance. This will be addressed at a separate future time. All definitions for competition have been removed. Distance requirements between food trucks was lessened to 200 feet. Hours of operation were changed to 7 a.m. and 9 p.m., seven days a week. Food trucks were added as permitted uses in the C3 and C4 districts. And we removed the restriction of only one food truck at a time on any property. And due to the significant number of changes, it was recommended that we bring the changes back to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And when we brought it back to the Planning and Zoning Commission on April 13th, 2021, the Planning and Zoning Commission declined to make any recommendation, which they also didn't decide to table it or have any further discussion. So to our understanding, we're here tonight to, and we don't foresee that as being an issue, but we defer to the county attorney for any question regarding that. Um, and of course, if anyone would like to go more in detail into the ordinance, we can, but all changes are as reflected pursuant to the last city council meeting. Okay. Jerry, do you have anything uh, to add? Uh, I've never heard of a planning and zoning commission just simply saying, well, we don't want to give any recommendations. <laughs> but I think that um, the best way to deal with that would be to simply take it as a denial. Um, that they're recommending denial of the ordinance and then proceed forward as you wish. Okay. It's your final decision. 
Okay, having said that, uh, this is first reading for Ordinance 02 2021. It's already been read into the record, so is there a motion? I move the City Council to approve um, with changes of Ordinance 02 2021. Is that the changes already in there, correct? If you are satisfied with the ordinance as it reads today, then it's just an approval as I presented. I hope that the city council approve ordinance 02 021. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions or changes? I don't know if it's from the public. Well, anyone? Council, public? Well, I'm just going to say, I think that my, I understand that I spoke to several of the planning and zoning members and it was their displeasure of reviewing it because it went from zero to 60 completely opposite of what they had looked at when they made their original recommendations. And I think it was just them not agreeing to it because they just didn't like any of it and knew that they couldn't change it because council had already made up its mind. Um, I personally, I think made my point last time that I think that some fair competition to our existing businesses and I don't like the hours, although I love the idea of lunch trucks. I just think that some areas don't need to have the competition um, right in front of them or right next to them when they already have, it's not a fair playing field anyway. And I'm not going to be able to vote yes on this because of that. It's, it's just not, it doesn't give any consideration to our existing businesses. Okay. Anything right. else? I agree. Uh, I, I uh, attended the, the uh, planning and zoning board meeting, and I, to my opinion, I thought they was a little confused as to what they was what, what was being asked of them, because I think one of the council member, one of the members, had stated they agreed with the changes, and then um, when the vote time came, they just were silent on it. So I really didn't think they really understood what was being asked of them. That was my. I, think. I would simply say that it's really kind of an on up switch. We, we need to have something in place. So um, if you get something in place, you can always tweak it later. And at this point, we have nothing. You know, so the world is, is open. You, if you vote to deny um, the, the, the ordinance, then you really just vote to let people do whatever they want to do anyway. At least you have some restrictions here. And we should tighten it down and not, you know, if you, if you wish to to tighten it down. Um, but um, just bear in mind, if you vote against it, that you, you should know that we got nothing. Okay. That's, that's what I'm talking about. I don't really think they really understood that um, something has to be there. That, 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 I, I shouldn't say it has to be there. There should be something there in place. And one of, like I said, one of the members stated that they agreed to it from the time they came to, to make the motion. Everybody just Clammed up. Mm -hmm. like, oh my goodness. And I think there was a little upset. No, I can't say upset. There was a little disturbed because they the they quote was something about um the council just didn't do any take any suggestions that we made or something like that. And I said we we did, you know, we did take your, some of your suggestions, but that's just the way it was. So. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second for the first reading. Uh, if there's no more questions or comments, we will. I just have one, one comment real quick to be yeah. honest with you. I just think that a lot of these permitted items in here are excessive as well as the time frame. So uh, I think that uh, this is leaving it open to where we'd have food trucks too many places and too much time. So I don't, I think we're excessive here. Okay. But if we do nothing now, if we do nothing now, we're going to be in that shape anyway. It's currently That's wide open. Exactly. Today. So this is actually more restrictive than what we have in place today. And I think we should could tweak it as time passes if needed. That's, that's my opinion. You can throw it all out next month if that's what it calls for. So we can make changes as needed. All right. So we have the first reading. It's already been... Proposed and seconded. So we'll now call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? No. Deputy Mayor Bernard? No. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed three to two. Thank you. Item number 11, we have ECT supplemental work order number 
180060-300-1200. Danielle. All right, this is referring to the pool hanger rotation and contamination cleanup. Um, this is the work that we're going to um, be moving forward on in-house. Um, and ECT is going to be providing the um, consultant services, the over, overview of the project. Um, this particular work order is to pay for the professional services and the sampling of the soil that you'll be removing. Um, and that is in the sum of $9,000. Okay. So uh, on this, Mr. Schrader, is this not something um, that we can do? I'm assuming you talk to our engineers and public works and it's not something. Actually, Rick here, he's the one that's been working on this with the okay. consultants. Uh, yes, we're going to be doing the work. Uh, we need to rent some equipment to do it. These work orders are slightly out of uh, sequence. The first one that we're going to do is number 12, okay. which is the groundwork sample. If approved tonight, that'll be done this week. We'll get the samples back in about a week to a week and a half. And if the sample is good, and show that total arsenic is below the threshold of commercial uh, levels, then starting the 17th, we'll do the actual work of excavating soil and bringing it to the landfill. Which would be number 11? Uh, yes. Okay. And then number 12, it, again, if the groundwork samples are below the threshold, then the wells will be abandoned. So the $9,000 for that, I believe the vast majority of that was for labor. So you're telling us that 7,700 of that is for labor. So that's yeah, $9,000 is for our consultant. She has to be there. She has to collect samples along the side of the excavation, bring them to the lab. <coughs> We're using the soil that's already stockpiled on the back of the export to fill it in. She has to take samples of that. And we anticipate it's going to be done in three days. I see. Monday, Tuesday, so there will be additional fees for the actual cost uh, of the city employees to go out there and excavate that soil. Just comp time. Is what we're looking at. We're looking at the public work supervisor and the utility and machine rental manager. and yes, disposal. Yes. Yeah, and, and I gave a preliminary cost estimate to Mark on what all the equipment rental would be. Do you have a ballpark of what that will be? About thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. Yeah, I think it was less than that because I think that included these fees. So that that includes these these yeah. fees here. So it's about another twenty, maybe twenty one, twenty two on top of this nine. Correct. Correct. We have to we have to go ahead and rent. Um, three large dumpsters to put the soil in. We have to rent the truck. We have to rent the truck to get the soil from the back of the export to the front of the export. It's going to be about 130 tons, and then we have to go ahead and, and uh, pay for the trucks to come by to pick up the contaminated soil, bring it to the landfill, and back. So let me ask you a question. So the so the seven thousand dollars for labor. This is going to this this um, consultant here. That's correct. Oh, 9,000? 9, 9,000 total. Oh, I'm sorry. So all of these together uh, would add up to the old quotes that they had submitted to us at a few meetings ago. And if I remember at that time, uh, their quote was, was it somewhere in the $90,000 range? I believe it was 75 to 150,000. 75 to 150. So where would this level come in in that seventy-five to one hundred and fifty? It's going to come into thirty thousand dollars. No, no, no. I mean, with, is this equivalent to the seventy-five or more like the hundred and fifty that they had quoted us? Be equivalent to the seventy-five. To the seventy-five. So all total, we've got roughly thirty for the first one. Then we've got. No, the, no that's the total. total. All yeah. the work orders and the and uh, rental rentals and. All of it's 30. Okay, so basically we're saving roughly $45,000 by doing it ourselves. At least. I see that as a win. It's a bad situation, but at least it's less of a bad situation, right? Okay. Does council have any? All at the same time? I, I, Jerry, do you see a reason why we couldn't approve 11, 12, and 13 all at the same time? No, Okay. Is there any questions from council? Clarifications, okay. Is there a motion to approve items number 11, 12, and 13 as presented? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. If there's no further questions. So one, one question. Go so ahead. It is my understanding that all three is going to cost $30,000. Correct. Okay. We're very close to it. 
All right, seeing no further questions, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passing in Item number 14, second quarter budget report. Daniel. Uh, just informational, this is your second quarter um, budget update. Okay, does anyone have questions on that? Seeing none, item number 15, city manager report. Okay, the first one, uh, we received our uh, notice of intent to award our infrastructure for our drinking water for $607,623. Awesome. Yep. Excited about that one. Um, <clears throat> the second one I have is the one that I, I got with the mayor on, that Jerry um, told me something before, but it's just, we put, I think I brought it up before, we put in with this Enterprise Florida $25,000 to use towards um, taking down the, the Brickle building, actually Sebring got it. Wild building. No, I'm sorry, why do I, we're not taking down, oh my gosh, I mean, taken out tomorrow but yes the uh, the wild building and the agreement here but jerry wants to look at it a little closer and but he believes it can be approved and um, pending his legal review of it because i've got florida or enterprise florida want it signed as soon as possible i talked to the mayor earlier they want him to even do it electronically so jerry if you want to add to that yeah no i just have uh, you know, a couple of issues i need to look at that are in there and um, I missed I missed what was sent to me before. I just got it, so I I, I don't want to have it just go go through without having a quick look at it. As soon as you know, if you would, just give me a call. Okay, great. Yeah, you'll probably see an email from her tomorrow sent to because I gave you your email. Okay, <laughs> I'm here from Jerry. You can sign it because they've been on me. The first day I had my name on. I said no, I can't sign it. Got it. Uh, but uh, I give kudos to. Um, Andy Mogul, who's actually working on the city hall, helping us out right now, but he put this together and Megan down at the county was just outstanding helping him out and he learned a lot from it. So awesome. hopefully, hopefully there'll be more to come. The uh, exterior wall of, um, I got 117, but I think it's 115 Main Street where we demo the wild building. Um, some of you have got with me, myself and Rick, W and David got with the owner a couple of weeks ago now, talked to him about it, and um, he was really good about it. We, uh, you probably saw it actually, I think it was Mike Stone out there today doing some patchwork on it, clean it up, and we're going to paint it similar color to what's in the front. He was talked to about a facade grant and maybe something he'll do in the future, but for now he's happy with what we're doing to make it look good for him and for the, the city. So. Okay. Um, I got a couple of text messages today in reference to our septage and um, they've been beating up Avon Park for a couple months now I guess on it but right now we're down and I'll, I'll let Rick talk about it but we're not accepting any and uh, Rick you want to handle it? Basically half the plant is down. We have two clarifiers that take the, uh, uh, the, the wastewater from the oxidation ditches and several valves. The sludge, one of those is going down. Uh, it's, a, it's a gear reduction device and a huge bearing. That seems to be the problem. Right now, we're pumping it out and uh, to see if there's anything else wrong with it. When we do that, we, we just don't have enough capacity in the screw presses to cut to, to uh, press enough sludge to take septic truck. We just can't do it. Uh, we, we not only have half the plant down, so one of the clarifiers has to be pumped out more than normal, but the down clarifier has to be pumped out. That means there's no available capacity for us to take any more trucks. Now, uh, Lakeside Equipment gave us a quote of 16 weeks for the part, and that's just for the gearbox. That's not for the bearing. So we've got we've contacted a couple of other contractors on an emergency basis. We have one come out Saturday take a look at it and he's uh, fairly certain that if we got another kind of gear reduction box he could make it work in that clarifier we've also got uh, i contacted mike Crowley down at uh, sun lake uh, uh, utility district and he gave us the name of another company who's local who's going to come out tomorrow and take a look at it 
and Rick Reed has gone ahead and contacted the third one. So we think between all of this, we may be able to get the parts we need. Plus, the city of Lake Wales uh, use the same plant. They got the same plant as we do. They have problems with, with their gear reduction box. So they took it out, placed it on the side, made something of their own, and we may be able to use that particular gear box with some minor modifications to at least get us through you know, th this current crisis. Uh, like I said, Rick is going up to Lake Wales tomorrow. I'll take a look at it and speak with the mechanics there. So uh, we're working just as hard as we can to get this fixed as quickly as we can. Will it be at 100% once it's all fixed to where you'll be able to continue taking uh, septage? I can't guarantee that because one of the screw presses is down. We only have two screw presses. And when one of them goes down, we can only press enough sludge to go ahead and uh, take care of the plant. We may be able to take a few trucks. We don't know. I, the plan here is to partner with the county potentially on one of the, one of the grants that they'll be getting and possibly one of the grants that we'll be getting to uh, work out some sort of an arrangement where they could help us expand back into that plant where we could take more sludge. But we have to wait on the analysis of the pressed liquid that comes out with back to the front of the plant to see if the plant, when it's operating normally, can actually uh, use that amount of, of uh, additional high strike waste storage. So right now you've notified all the sludge haulers that no, we're not taking their stuff. No, or the no, I'm not. No, I'm not contacted any of the sludge haulers. They they know by coming there they see that. Okay. But I mean, if they're coming here, they're driving quite a way to get here. That's a huge expense on them as well. I mean, we don't call anybody and let them know, hey, we're going to be shut for 16 weeks. Uh, we have so much else going on right now that no, we don't have the time to call them. If they can't take it out of plant, they'll go up the whole county. Dump it, so it's it's on their way. What day did we go down? It was last week, I believe, it was Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, so most of them know, but I take your point. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, the um, Rick's put together is a draft that's uh, for the mall maintenance and the scope of work. And I know a couple of you back when I first started here a year ago were very interested in seeing that before it went out. So. Be all right, just email to you if you've got something you can. I'm not sure. I have issues with my email, I, I can't even log in. So I sent you my yeah, we, we, one. Yeah, send it there. Yeah, if you take a note, we need to get that fixed. Kyle. Just email it to all the council members if you can, and then of course you'll have it available for physical pickup from the city hall, right? Yep. Yep. I'd like to go back to the enterprise board of approval. If okay. we're, if we're in the consensus of we're going to approve this and you're going to sign without it coming back before council, we need a motion now. We need to, yeah, we need to approve it on a motion to approve. Is it pending your review? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll make a motion we approve the Enterprise, Enterprise Florida grant pending Jerry Gear's review. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. I have a second. Take whatever. It's a tie. It's all right. All right. We have a motion and a mystery second. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no opposition, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Zetterlin? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Ray? Yes. Okay. Anything else? We got one more. Uh, Council Member Gray wanted to bring up um, possibly waiving um, some late fees on a, a water bill. I um, um, asked Miss um, Rachel Hicks. Let me give you an update on what's going on with this, first of all. There's property at uh, 213 East Ben Hicks Street has a water bill of over $12,000. The, the, the family would never be able to, to pay all of that. And what's happening with that is $9,613.67 is late fees and that type of thing. What happened is the, the property owner passed away um, 2004, I think it was, uh, and then the daughter moved into the house, and when Hurricane Irma came, uh, the roof got damaged, then the bill never was changed from the original property owner to the current um, owner now. So now the grandson is the property owner. The property owner now is trying to get the house uh, livable 
So I've already spoken with um, the SHIP program to try to get some funds to help fix the house up so we can bring this house back on uh, livable in the community. The request is that since the, the um, bill is almost is eleven thousand nine hundred forty one dollars and eighty eight cents, nine thousand six hundred and thirteen dollars and sixty seven cents of that is late fees and late fees. That's what they put it down as. Roughly so, two thousand is actual water fees. At two thousand three hundred twenty eight dollars and twenty one cents is actually it's not water. What it is is garbage, garbage bill. That's that's the accumulation of it. So the request is to to waiver the the nine thousand six hundred thirteen dollars. Put ask the there's two there's two things. First of all, to waiver the the um, um, late fees, have the property put into ask the property owner to put it into a current owner's name and not the deceased member who the, who is in now and put have them to put them on a payment plan for the $2,328.21 for 12 months. And because every month there's still going to be that um, $15 garbage fee. So they will pay that the way, I mean the um, extended amount plus the $15 each month. And then that way we will be working of getting this property back on um, livable for a family. Is this what Frank, the, no one lives in it right now? Then? No. Frank, was um, did that amount include water fees? Yes. Okay. Are there any liens on the property? No. Okay. Because the the to, since 2015 16, we don't charge late fees on the on the garbage itself. Yeah. So the late fees that are occurring are from the actual water portion, yes. and we've typically in the past have waived those late fees on the water. So I'm assuming it's probably a fairly small home. It is. So if it's minimum charges for garbage and everything, you're you're less than hundred dollars a month typically, right? For water. For water and garbage together. It's about fifty six dollars. Yeah, it's about sixty bucks per. So yeah. I guess my question is, how in the world did it go unpaid for two years without us cutting that service off? It, no, it, it hasn't it because has it's, been. it's been garbage fees. It, it was just garbage fees. And this started because after Brenda Callman went down the gap with um, she was given by Marnita. It looks like it started back in November of 17. Yeah. Um, is when it really started climbing. And then obviously it, it goes by percentages, but no, it was garbage. The I water see. was shut up. So yes. wasn't an ordinance or a resolution passed in regards to uh, admin fees or you know the hard costs? Yes, which is the two thousand she's referring to, or the eleven thousand nine hundred or something. So you're you're referring to the late fees. We don't charge it on the actual garbage fees. Okay. So, and they don't want to charge the late fee on the water. So the amount of water that was charged every month, it'll charge that um, percentage on just the water and sewer that we got. Right, the late fees and the sewer every month is what it's going on. Yeah, but in the past we've waived all the white the late fees before. Mm -hmm. And those are city attorney have a comment. Um, I can follow the same the same comment that I've I've made before. I mean, I, you need some standards for this, looks like you do for uh, uh, for giving code enforcement leave. But I I'm not going to step into this because. It's a, it's a, I don't know if that by and large, I don't see how some of it would be possible for that. Yeah. I, I don't see an issue with taking late fees off. That's not hard costs. Yeah. So, I mean, are their taxes paid up and all? They're not going to lose the house yeah. anytime you, you know, they're not looking to sell it and get this. No, this that was that the first thing. <laughs> yeah, so now they've got, you know. No, that was the first thing that I that I uh, ventured out to to make to ensure that. I even went to the county and talked with the SHIP program, but they will have some funds available within the next 90 days. And that would be homeowner occupied. Yes. The only, yes. the only additional thing I would have to say is that you, know, you should probably have a brief agreement, probably do it with staff, but just simply where those situations where you know no good term goes unpunished, you know, somebody gets this forgiven, then they decide that uh, they're going to sell the house or they decide that uh, they're not going to pay the the new water bills and so on. Yeah, they, so yeah. they got some in this, order. <laughs> yeah, typically with this, we do the, the payment arrangement and the liens, any, if any liens were recorded, we don't release them until it's paid. There you go. Okay. 
And Ms. Gray, there is someone, I know you. no one's in the house, but there is someone that you that, that has agreed to make the monthly payments. Yes, Ms. Rachel, uh, Ms. Rachel, oh, she's the Ms. aunt Rachel. of okay. the young man, it's her nephew. Okay. Oh, okay. Is there a motion? I don't know what to say, but I'll, I agree with what Brenda's saying. I, I'm good with this. Okay. So, the, the, the motion should be to, was was to um, waiver the 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 um, late fees, late, late fees on and on the property, mm -hmm. and also allow the homeowner to um, pay twenty three, twenty eight, twenty one over twelve months plus the monthly garbage fee. And the third thing, the property be placed into a current family member. Well, the last part is all they need to do is go down and apply to the city to change the thing. Yeah, they've done that. They, they, it's, it's been changed, but it has not been changed on our side. Hmm. So the they, property they, is- They just have to come down to city hall and sign the contract. Gotcha. Get their yeah. social work. And, and that's, that's everywhere that has to happen. Okay. And, so you just need a motion to waive the fees and enter into a payment arrangement for 12 months. Yes. Can I make a motion? To, in, in addition to the $15 a month? Yes. Right. Yeah, that's what Can I make that motion that we away with those late fees on the property? Um, what well, well, the mayor just said. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. That's a, that's a more than a mouthful. But so, anyway, uh, and, and with the arrangement that they will pay uh, this monthly fee. So it's basically so moved. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? Is there any further questions? I'd just like to make a statement. I've been working with this client um, way back when the um, CDBG grant came out and they had applied for it. But now I realize this is probably why they didn't wasn't on the list because you can't owe money to the city. So okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. That's it. Oh, yes. wait a minute. I have one other thing. Mm -hmm. Not concerning this, an update on Lake Tulane cleanup. The update on Lake Tulane cleanup it is on David Roberts's list. You know, to get to it, whether it's three, four, or five, I don't know, but they're extremely busy. There are three people down, and there's a five person crew down from the inmate. So, but I talked to him after I talked to you. Okay. He said, Yes, Mark, we're going to get to it. Can I tell you the exact day? Just the same as he told me about the building up there. I can't tell you the exact day. So, so, so who's David Roberts now? He's a public work supervisor. Oh, I'm public work yes, and doing a heck of a job. And, and again, I'll give them all kudos for being over there. I, um, well, Galen's left and, and about the park and the bathrooms over there. And I went over there and met with Rick Reed and David Roberts and they just took off from there. And I thought the park looked extremely nice um, for the Blueberry Festival. Yeah, they were there, I think, just two or three days before the yep, event. Yeah, they said you were out the running, stopped yeah. in and saw them. And, but yeah. uh, no, they did really good work and their guys, and they, they worked very hard over there. So they'll do the same down in Lake Tulane. So. I just would appreciate that very much. Anything else for the good of the city? Yes, I would like to make a comment. And I don't know how often it's being made, but for the administration that falls under um, administration, Mark Schrader, Dave, Rick, Danielle, thank you for what you do. You guys really do do a good job. And I see it and I do appreciate it. I'm sure all of us see it, but it's very much very well appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Guys and all, all of you that reached out to Kim, that meant a lot to us. So. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anything else to be good in the city? No, Seeing none. I want to have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, please. Seeing no opposition, we are adjourned.